Hey guys, got a uh, 59 Comanche 250. And uh, if anybody knows anything about Comanches, they know about the infamous Gear AD, the thousand hour. That came up, uh, I was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, because I was wanting to do a complete resto. And ended up stripping the gear wells with a, a dry paint stripper. Um, that was a pretty cool process. And flew it back, put it up on jack, started everything. One thing led to another, ended up pulling the engine, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I posted everything on my Instagram story and everybody loved it. So um, the video's not organized, it might jump around, but I stitched everything together to where you can follow along with all the progress that happened over seven and a half months and a lot of money spent, but wow, did it turn out good. So stay tuned. I think I'm gonna try to do maybe three, maybe four videos. It was a whole lot longer than I thought it was gonna be, but um, here you go. Today's the day. I'm gonna start the annual. Lots of stuff. Gonna redo the prop. It's got a lot of rash on it. I'm gonna chrome this. Get the bafflings all powder coated. Powder coat the valve covers, make them look all fancy. Exhaust, it's had its better days. Gonna replace that. New harness up top. It's about a thousand hours. New plugs. Overhaul the mag. Oh, that's probably about firewall forward, what we're gonna do. Then the uh, thing I've been dreading, gonna overhaul the landing gear. Thousand hour gear AD. I'm gonna repaint the gear wells. See, we already got them stripped a little bit. Add an air conditioning system, and uh, I guess two months from now, when that's all back together, take it to the avionics shop for autopilot. Maybe I'll make something fun. We'll see. Been busy. That's all trash. Had a little project drift. Everything's disconnected from the motor. Ended up, I'm gonna pull the motor. We're gonna redo the firewall. So everything's ready. Prop's gonna come off tomorrow, go to the prop shop. Engine's gonna come off, go on the test stand, do all that. All the powder coated stuff. We're gonna have some chrome stuff. There's the magnes boo overhauled. Fun stuff. If anybody was curious about uh, an update, slash my sanity check. Got the interior slash rudder pedals removed. Do a firewall refresh. Got most the engine tore down. And um, engine's ready to pull. Everything's ready off the motor mount. Got everything ready here to uh, send out to get plated. Here's rotor pedals. Hell of a project. A little overwhelmed, but it'll come together. I'm gonna get everything out to the chrome shop. Slid the, the rocker bosses out, pull the rockers, get the push rods out, and then take the sleeves off. More chrome. Date. Still in uh, demolition mode. Engine's letting come off, but uh, we're replacing this cylinder. Found uh, some metal right there. That wasn't good. Got the new jug there. And uh, I got to get new all lines right there. New tool alert. What's inside that box? Where it's Christmas Day. I got me a blast cabinet. Shout out for Estes, though, for uh, stabbing a fork through it. But it'll be out boxes four days oh i'm so excited about to be able to clean some parts up there's the beat blasting cabinet getting rid of all that gun crazy that's good still out here working here's a little before got all those parts done Update. Haven't slept, but uh, got the insulation off. Gonna have to clean all the goo off. Control cables are out. 
all the brake lines, everything uh, off the firewall up here. About ready for the engine to come off. Nothing is left, so the fun stuff of paint stripping. Got everything beat blasted to go to the powder coaters. All these parts. And we got more parts. Crazy. Love that thing. So the project continues. Got the old junkyard dogs. Got the airplane junkyard. Let's see if we can find some parts. It's always pretty cool looking at these old planes. Here's the uh, original Piper Autopilot. This a later, like a 61 model, but uh, looks like it caught on fire. Everything's melted. It's neat seeing how everything was originally configured. The uh, convertible Canache. It's the latest fad. A little breezy. We have found the Comanches. Love stealing parts. Need this thing right there. Progress besides cleaning it up, but uh, moment of truth. Whew. That's money, dude. Got the governor overhaul, too. It's gonna look good. Here's the carburetor. Here's the heat box. This thing's go for a lot of money. A little flapper thing for the carb heat's wearing through, so I'm gonna replace this little reinforcement bracket. Remove the rivets. You just drill a little hole. And then you stick this little prick in there. Pock it out. And then they punch out. And we're gonna repair. Got them all out, moment of truth. Yeah. A little bit more of a crack than I thought. Probably make a new one of these to go to the outside. And then uh, another one to go to the inside. And go all get it uh, powder. Glad I beat blasted it. Got it there and there it's rubbing through. It's cracked there, cracked there, cracked there. Another one starting there and there. And obviously this big man pajama. So, I'm gonna get that to the aircraft welder. But in case anybody wanted to know what an accelerator pump and a carburetor does, got the butterfly valve and <laughs> all the bolts off the jug. Here we go. There she blows. Good. Well, she's jugless. There's the uh, old wrist pan, piston. You can see the oil ring was a little gummed up. I was getting 42 over 80 on this one. The rings are not bad. The valves aren't bad either. Not burn or anything. Um, the leakage was coming past the rings so you hear it through the breather. But the main thing was the valve geometry is off. You can see it's making metal right here. So I uh, got a new um, rocker and a piston or a uh, jug. Out here making more plane parts. I need to get me one of these. A bit dull as hell, but this ain't super critical. When you can start making shavings that big, you know you're getting your feed, feed and speed right. Should be the final cut. Remember a little bit from high school, not much. Well, from uh, cold roll bar stock to these parts that cold roll doesn't turn down with the crap, so it's pretty bad, but can't see them. Um, we're gonna reinforce the gear legs or the rudder pedals where you can, uh, they don't bend. So those are gonna step in there and then pound them in, get them powder coated. You can see how the uh, old one broke, had to save it. The other one was uh, pretty bent, so I'm just gonna prevent that. Here's the finished product. Got the steel piece sleeved in there for strength. So that way, if it tries to bend like right here, like it did the last one, rudder pedal slides over that. It gets pinned in there with the spacer. And uh, got all the other parts laid out for powder cutter so you don't lose any. 
ready to see what they look like when they get back. Here, preparing the uh, new jug. Got the flange all cleaned up. Now we're uh, gapping the rings. So here's the rings. These are chrome because we have a, where's it at? Nitrite cylinder, you can see it indicated with blue. Here's the piston, so you stick the ring in there and then you slide the piston in there to gap it to the right space. And what we're aiming for is if you see that little bitty crack right there, it need to be seven thousandths, excuse me, seven and a half thousandths. So we got seven and a half right there. These rings didn't need to be ground down, but uh, when it goes in there, if they touch, they shatter. So that is about eight thousandths right there. Now we can put the rings on the piston, saw the piston in, put the jug on the engine. Uh, just to clarify, the rings are gonna go on the piston. You got uh, the top one, or top two are the compression. The bottom is the, uh, the oil scraper so the oil doesn't get past. Um, but you're using the piston just to slide these in. And uh, so that way you can screw the ring up nice and square and get an accurate measurement. First measurement's at four inches but uh, the bore is choked, so it actually gets narrower as it goes down by about 30 thousandths. And uh, that's what makes compression once you get to the top of the stroke. So we measured the four inch, we measured the six and a half inch, and uh, we'll put it together now. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Uh, all right, this is the top of the jug. Let's see, the cylinder, I always go labels up, so this looks like it'll be the top going this way. Let's flip that over. The rings, Lycoming doesn't have any, uh, you can notice how there's a gap on all of them, so you really don't want them all to line up. Every once in a while, they rotate, so they might line up, but just like cars, I don't know, I'd go third, so, you know, 120 degrees, 120 degrees. This is the oil ring. I'm gonna do the oil ring on top, since the oil's gonna pull on the bottom. Got a ring here, and a ring there. We're gonna use this tool, compress them down, and then we're gonna slip it in. And we got her all lubed up. Clip. Put the jug in there. Give it a little bit. Here, one second. There we go. Let's pull it out just enough to get the wrist pin through. This piston's ready to be installed. Video, but I'm going to show you what's going on. Got the wrist pin. It's got uh, caps that go on the end. So once the pistons, the rod comes through, you put the piston wrist pin through. The caps go on the outside, and then you can shove the whole jug on. Uh, you got to oil all the threads. The retainer clips go on here. This is a narrow deck engine, so it's got these. Uh, I call them innies, belly button instead of an Audi, um, and then we will torque these through. Getting to the pist or the cylinders is not hard. The hardest part is getting to the oh, excuse me, getting to everything, taking off the intake, the exhaust, baffling, all of that. This is simple as hell. The most critical part though is torquing the through bolts. So this bolt and the one right up underneath go through the crankcase and they put preload on the crank. So if you do not, you can see how they line up right here. If you do not torque those properly on both sides, your engine will grenade. We don't want that. Jugs on, working on the front seal. Got it out. There's the old one. So two piece, apparently. I've never done this before. This is a bitch seal because you can slide it over like that. What we're gonna do is do the one piece seal. It's a quarter of the price, but this has to go around that. So I guess I'm about to take the seal's virginity because that some bitch is about to be stretched. Well, about halfway there. Let's send her home. There she goes. I don't know if you can see that. Sweet. Oh my goodness, that was kind of a motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god.
Yeah, well, we're committed now. It's kind of hard to see the end in sight. There's so many pieces. And once I get done with this, I got to do the mains. Oh my goodness. It was way too nice not to do some painting. So doing some uh, chemical converting, getting this stuff ready to prep, but start with the uh, acid wash, end up with the alodyne, and then uh, here's the bare part. This is not gonna be painted, but it'll make it look pretty gold. I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. So aluminum oxidizes pretty much almost instantly. So you use acid to remove the oxidation and then the alodyne chemically converts it to where you have pretty much like a pre-primer to your primer. Um, so scuff it with that, with some uh, scotch Brite. Rinse it with water. If the water sheets, like you see that, all the uh, oxidation's gone. We're gonna dry it off and we'll set it in the alodyne. And uh, that's when the pretty part part starts. If I can do this one-handed. Obviously wear chemical gloves because this stuff is some nasty stuff. I'm gonna let it soak. I'm just rotating it just to get an even golden color on it because it's not, I don't have enough of this expensive stuff to soak the whole thing, but. There you go. Rinse it. Well, I'm gonna rinse it in water, but you get the idea. All right, once you pull it out, rinse it with water. Dry it off. You can see if you leave it in there longer, it turns stuff a little bit more gold, but that old oxidized air intake looks pretty good. So there we have it. And you can leave this stuff unpainted because it's kind of like a little corrosion resistant layer. Well, got all of it painted, painting these little parts is such a pain. Probably at least 50 little bitty pieces. Looks good though. First coat of stripper on this horror story. It's coming off decent, but got a lot of work ahead of me. This is the part I've been dreading. I'm trying to get all the old glue off the firewall. And the wheel wheel hump. Make a progress. A little die grinder with a little sanding disc. But uh, yeah, this sucks. Good, thank God for a respirator. Try not to mess the panel up. Well, two coats of paint stripper. We're starting to cut through. That's galvanized steel right there. And um, let's see what else we got in the inside. I hate paint stripper. This stuff sucks. Making progress. Starting to see bare metal. Gonna hell of a freaking mess to clean up though. A little progress report of the airplane. Just been cleaning, stripping, cleaning. All these parts are almost ready for paint. Got the prop there, unpackaged, off gas so it cures a little faster. Interior, cleaning. Not really much gone in there. Made some templates for the uh, firewall insulation, which I might do that tonight. So that's what the new insulation, the pattern, got that. Got the fabric, gonna sew that up here pretty soon. Stripped the motor mount. Gotta replace these bushings, pretty worn out. Got the wheels stripped. Working on replacing some bushings here. Easiest way I found to pull these out is just to tap them, take a bolt, thread it in there, and uh, when you tighten it down, it'll suck it out. So, a bunch of the speed spat off right here, stripped it, gonna seal it up a little better. It was kind of like a little pocket to hold oil on the belly. There's some tools I bought, some mic the bushings for the gear AD. Each one's within uh, a thousand seven inch. And they're within 0 0.0002 thousandths of an inch tolerance. But pretty much put these in there, mic the hole. The manual calls out for, I think, a three or four thousandths tolerance. So if they are out of tolerance, then we'll push them out, replace them. Got a few of them right there, but uh, just going through them. I think there's 21 bushings in the nose. Strip the firewall, 
still working on it cleaning up everything for paint I'm gonna pro seal all the stuff and build a little booth so we shall see once the paint's on it that should be going back on but until then more cleaning and more progress here at the house got the insulation cut out from the templates we made you can see where the nose wheel hump goes right here here's the fabric got it glued on there with insulation at the sewing machine had a little practice piece right here you can do a cross stitch two colors looks pretty good so that should be the finished product it's cold as hell out it's snowing but got the air box back um welded some reinforcements where it was all cracked out and um, ended up adding some oil light bronze bushings into the uh, thing. Still got to put these rivets in. Gonna put a doubler plate on this side Oop, where you see it all cracked out, but um, those bronze bushings in there, it's uh, pretty nice. Ended up having to put larger size rivet on those because we took this off to weld all that out. Everything was cracked, but almost done with it. About 10 hours just in this little piece. I'm gonna blast it once I get those rivets in there and uh, take it to the powder cutter and get it coated on Friday. Thing that was just kind of a little bit of a pain. You can see where the door was uh, rubbing on the metal and it was kind of digging into the aluminum right there, hence the doubler plate. But um, since the door moves, you can see how it would hit that rivet. So I ended up having to make a arbor tool with a countersink, countersink those holes right in there, and then back rivet. So we put the bucking bar, the tungsten bucking bar, we got the back rivet set to get those done. And then the, uh, the other two weren't in the way, so we could just buck them normal, just universal head rivets right here. So you can see universal head, back riveted, countersunk. It's amazing the amount of tools that you need to do this. 90 degree drill, I mean, that's a thousand bucks just right there ended up having some flush rivets, so countersunk all these. Put the rivets in, got the bucking bar. Got the 2X rivet gun. And there is a driven rivet. You can kind of see in there what it looks like. 12 hours of work, ready for the powder cutter. All cleaned up. Got the air box on with the aldine. Flush rivets. That piece right there. 